There is much to be learned from people who have lived on this land much longer than we have. A knowledge that manifests itself not only in their relationships with nature, their songs and epics, their technology and creations, but in their very survival. Only by being aware of this heritage of the indigenous can we find not only our roots, but our direction. Their pride and ours, captured in one word, Dayao. When you take a look at a piece of handwoven textile, what do you see? A design? A motif? A pattern? In this day and age of machine manufactured fabrics, there is much more than just an eye catching design to be fascinated with. There is this whole system of knowledge that allows a woman or a man to produce his or her own threads, color these with dyes made from bark and herbs, and lay out the warp and the weft on a backstrap loom with an intended design that exists only in their mind's eyes. There is this physical strength and mental alertness of weavers who must sit long and straight as their backs provide tension for the loom. What emerges seemingly from their very bodies are textiles that are sources of dayao, our knowledge, our pride. In traditional societies, the craft of weaving was associated with women of knowledge, spirituality, and healing. Skilled weavers were matriarchs sought for their counsel. Their knowledge of the forest and its medicinal herbs. Their connection with the world of the spirits. Their intuition for trade. In short, the weaver was a female leader who played vital roles in family and community life. The challenges of weaving on a backstrap loom require intense concentration, long hours of uninterrupted work, mental fortitude, and yes, imagination. This loom is a common instrument used by indigenous weavers all over the archipelago and Southeast Asia. Despite the seeming simplicity of the vertical layout, it is an amazingly complex system that requires concentration and manual dexterity. The weaver must sit with her back, providing the tension that packs the warp and weft threads together. Her hands pulling at the heddle sticks that control the layout of the design. And this is just the weaving process. The production of hand-spun threads and organic dyes were equally arduous tasks that required a knowledge of agriculture, botany, and chemistry. As weaving was considered a gift of the deities in many traditional societies, the weaver also needed to be able to discern the will of the spirits who had given to the community this precious gift. The textiles produced were not only used for dress. Textiles were signifiers of prestige and social rank within the community. Taken outside, they were valued trade goods that were bartered into other communities. In rituals, special textiles were used to communicate with the spirits. In death and in birth, bodies were wrapped in specific and symbolic fabrics. The government, through the initiatives of the NCCA, has honored weavers who have embodied the best of their traditions and guaranteed their survival. Two of these recipients of the Gawad Manilikanang Bayan 
specialized in weaving of abaca textiles. The abaca fiber is an exceptionally difficult fiber to produce and to weave. The weaving of it is practiced by the groups of Highland Mindanao, the Bagobo, Tibolis, Mandaya, Subanon, and Bilaan. Salinta Monon was a Giangan Bagobo woman who specialized in the dense weave with patterns from ethnic templates. Lang Dulai, a Tiboli, had mastered the production of the large-scale traditional designs of her people in all their dazzling complexity. Both women were recognized for both their technical skill as well as their artistry. Both produced their own fibers, dyed these according to their knowledge of herbs and natural materials. Both set up their own looms and laid out the threads. Both were proponents of the Ika technique of weaving. Ika is the process of tie dyeing specific portions of a bunch of thread so that the tied portions resist any dyes. When laid out for stringing on the loom, the raw threads look like nothing more than abstractions. But in the positive and negative portions lie the blueprint of a textile that when finished can only be described as complex, whole, integrated and nothing short of amazing. Both women, after receiving their awards, continue their dual life missions to continue weaving and to pass on their knowledge to younger women of their own communities. Sadly, both Lang Dulai and Salinta Monon have passed on, but their handiwork and their wisdom live on in the hands of younger weavers. Near Banawe, the weaver Angelina Bule works quietly in her home, assisted by her son and daughter. Her forte is ikat weaving, a technique that is still very much alive in Highland Mindanao but was almost extinct among the Cordillera people. Until the last half of the 20th century, Ika textiles were the most highly valued by the Ifugao. Kung naghahabi si nanay, ganito ang nisiset up ako ang gumawa ng ganito. Ako ang maghahabi. At saka yung gumawa ng design, yung nakaplastar sa thread, eh, tinuluan na akong na mag, uh, magtali. Ito yung pinakaunang Ifugao ikat weaving begins with a muntudun or the hand rolling of the threads. In the Mumbayat stage, the threads are laid out to form the pre-warp. Then the most difficult stage, Mumbubud, or tying the warp so that it can resist the dyes. The dyes used combine salt, mud, and the bark and leaves of specific trees. Red, for example, is the product of Nara bark. The 
pumasok sa loob yung kulay niya. After the dyed threads have been air dried, they are then rewarped and set up on the loom. Only when the warp and weft are precisely laid out can the process of weaving or monhabol begin. The motifs of Angelina's work incorporate the symbols that Ifugao recognize. The lizard, a totemic animal of ancient origin, the mortars and rice sheaves that signify bounty, the mountain ranges that make up their home. Her signature masterwork, though, is a reproduction of the U.S. Pinintuan, the ikat blanket first woven but no longer produced by the Isinai of Neva Vizcaya. This blanket was traded by the Isinai into Ifugao territory and became much valued as a death shroud known as a kinutian. In Angelina's work, the motifs of a rare textile, once thought vanished, now lives again. So, bali, ito po yung pinaka-hari ng mga blankets po. Pinaka, kasi ito po ginagamit po ng mayayaman namang. Bawal pong gumamit ng mahihirap. Ito po isang recognition po para sa journey po ng isang successful man in his journey in life. In Ilocos Sur, in the town of Kawayan, Weavers, both young and old, take their own weaving traditions into the future. The spare, striped, binandera designs of the Ilocos peasants is their forte. But newer elements are being added because the market for handwoven textiles from the Ilocos demands innovation in color, in texture, in pattern. In a bill, the term for handwoven fabric from Ilocos mirrors the stoic simplicity as well as the resilience that characterize the Ilocano. The loom used is very different from the back strap. The frame looms are large enough to sit on and are operated by the feet of the weaver as well as by the hands. It is known as the pedal loom. Magdalena Gamayo is 91 years old. She has been weaving all her life in her hometown of Pinili, Ilocos Norte. In 2012, she was awarded the Gawad Manlilikanang Bayan for her outstandingly fine abel weaving. The award was given in recognition of her ability to produce, dye, and weave native cotton into inabel. Sadly, she now is experiencing difficulty in getting a good supply of native cotton and must work with a commercial kind. But still, Nana Magdalena goes on weaving. The signature weave of the region is a binacol, a double-edged blanket weave. The design is characterized by an optical illusion of vibrating spheres, squares, and cruciforms. The cosicos, or whirlwind design, is a binacol variant, influenced by the neighboring Tingyan of Abra. The design has been likened to op art because of the seeming vibrations and movement 
that echoes the volatility of the whirlwind. And to create the whirlwind, it takes the experienced eye, the quiet calm of older weavers, passing on their visions and their knowledge to their younger counterparts. Weaving as a continuation of a tradition, as a resurgence and revival of lost knowledge, as an expression of one's culture. Now, what about weaving as a viable source of income, as a cooperative effort that allows entrepreneurs and weavers to work together to create business relationships and economically stable communities? In Arevalo, Iloilo, the signature weave is called hablon. Weavers here work with entrepreneurs and financiers from within their communities to form informal cooperatives where textiles are literally the fabric on which their lives depend. Mrs. Cecilia Hison Villanueva is one such entrepreneur who empowers the weavers. I do not know how to weave, I just manage. But I am the one making, uh, the, uh, maybe, uh, giving them the design, the color, and what item to weave. Because I am the one attending to the customers, so I adjust to what my customers like, or what are they interested, like the barongs for men. I also make colored barongs. I supply them the materials, the loom, and uh, I give them the design. And then once they finish, they bring it here, and I pay them by the piece work. And their, their pay is, depends on what kind of work. If it is so uh, intricate, so they have a higher pay. It's a simple one. It depends on what kind of item I order. For me, I think uh, weaving will not, will not die. No. I am optimistic that it will go on. You know, I have a weaver. He, she died already. She told me the weaving will not stop, it will continue. In Barangay Tamontaka in Cotabato City, Bai Albaya Wampa of Inaul Weaving talks about the practical concerns when traditional designs must conform to modern tastes. Surely, a challenge that any weaving tradition must undergo to survive. We usually use the, the traditional design, no? but we mix the latest trend ngayon, we usually adapt din namin. Most of the traditional designs are this, uh, this, the, 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 the colorful one, just like this, ito yung sinaunang ano namin, mga designs, no? This design is Mupak sa Langit. One of the oldest design, maginda na design. Yung trend na color, medyo nagmix na siya. Favorite color for this design, maroon, green, uh, golden yellow, and then we have the blue one. Ito yun siya, yung mix, mix colors, no? We started nga, Kako, is from 1996. But then, hindi pa masyado si Boom kasi we only had that, that time, isang loom lang kami. Old lady lang yung nag weave sa, ami, sa akin. Tapos kaya, inorganize ko sila way back, no? Itong mga women na, uh, usually single mothers, separated mothers, and then single ladies. Yung mga Muslim, try people kami. In the sense that yung mga, uh, itong organization is composed of try people actually. Ang mga officers dito, being, me being the founder, founding president, 
Meron kasi akong uh, kaibigan na mga Christian, kasama sila sa set of officers nitong Aljamela. Kami-kami yung nag-ano nito. Weaving is a very strong symbol. It's a very good symbol of the community because the way the threads in intersect the warp and the woof, no? Uh, symbolize a closely knit community. Um, and it's the, ma it's the mother, it's the woman who maintains the sense of community. Why? Because the family is basically mother and child. There cannot be any, any stronger bond than the mother and child connection. You will note how strong a community is depending on the tightness of the weave. The more uh, micro is the interweaving pattern is stronger the sense of community. And the more you'll find that the mother is uh, the one that really unites, that really bonds the community. I'd like to think of the looms as the early computers and of the weavers as the early programmers. Guiding their efforts were nothing more effective than feminine intuition, shared knowledge, and imagination. Sadly, other factors like war and violence, poverty and marginalization, even apathy, are constant threats to the preservation of this ancient feminine power. And yet, these weavers endure and continue. Strong women, leaders, Survivors, proud carriers of Dayao, our knowledge, our pride. <laughs>